Hey guys, it's Josh here. All right, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create an image overlap section in Divi. We're gonna recreate essentially the layout that I have on the front page of my website where this image right here, which is my ebook, where it's overlapping the top and the bottom. It's very easy to do this, just a little bit of CSS magic, and you can use this on any image or really any element that you want to on your Divi website. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. I have set up essentially the same layout on this test site. So we've got a title here with a divider, some blurb text. We've got a guy here who is obviously very happy and is ready to get his ebook out into the world. We've got the same layout that's similar to my site. Now, you'll notice with mine, I have an email sign up. We're not gonna worry about that because that gets a little more intricate depending on what system you're using. If you're using MailChimp or Constant Contact because these fields need to be CSS separately, uh, but I might do a separate tutorial for that. In this case, what we're gonna do is just put a little button here and we're just gonna say click here to you know download the book or go to another page, but we're gonna create that same look that I have in my site. So let's go ahead and dive into the back end of this page. Again, I've already got this set up, so you'll see the structure here. So we've got the text, the divider, the image here with the button and, and all that good stuff. So this is what we wanna worry about. We wanna make this overlap these sections here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the visual builder you can use the back end, but for the sake of this tutorial, I think it might be easier if you see this firsthand. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to this image itself. Now, the first thing I actually want to do is I want to take care of all the padding on top and bottom of the actual section. So I'm going to hold uh, Shift and Alt, and I'm going to just drag these in. So the top and the bottom have zero padding. And I'm going to go into my little image ebook here section here, and I'm going to go to Advanced Settings and custom CSS, which is my favorite little place for all the modules in Divi. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use margins, more specifically negative margins, to make this overlap. So we're gonna go margin top, and I think on my side I had this set at 75. And there we go. You can see just doing that, that little bit of code bumps that right up. Now we need to do that for the bottom as well in order to get that to uh, be able to go across the bottom there. So we're gonna do bottom, and I think I had mine at 45 or so. Now, one thing you'll notice is it didn't hold right there. It didn't take. So what we need to do, which you'll have to do this with Divi quite frequently, is to use an important tag. And then there we go. By using important, you can see it dropped that down a little bit. Go ahead and add that semicolon. And there we go. We'll click save. And there's one last thing I want to do here because it looks pretty good. You could, this could fly, but there's a little bit more padding here on the bottom. So what I might do is just go into the actual row here, and we're just gonna drag this up just a little bit to where that looks nice and flush there. And there we go, so we're gonna go ahead and save this. Okay, so now that that's saved, we're gonna go ahead and exit the Visual Builder. And there we go. Just a little bit of negative margin on top and bottom and adjusting the padding for this section gave this a completely different look, very similar to what I have on my site here. Now there's a couple other things we need to adjust and we need to dive in here though, is once you look at the mobile and the tablet view, for example, when we scroll in, you can see things start getting a little dicey about right here. We've got the image overlapping the text, and if we look on the tablet view, that image is huge. And same thing on the phone. That could probably work on the phone, but it's a bit big. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some styles that are going to basically tell this to change sizes depending on what screen size it is. So if you're familiar with Inspect Element, I'm gonna use that. Um, if you're not using Chrome, you can do that on Firefox for Safari. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know if there's an Inspect Element tool for that, but I'm gonna post a link to a tutorial that's uh, a good know how to use Inspect Element, but I'm gonna go ahead and inspect this. And again, we're gonna use this little icon here that's gonna be able to look at the phone and the tablet. So these don't look bad, but again, we just wanna adjust this, and essentially we just wanna give it a, a, a max width to make sure it doesn't exceed a certain width. So what I'm gonna do, first things first, is I'm gonna go back into the Visual Builder. We're gonna take these settings out, and I'm gonna assign this image a class, and we're gonna use that class to tell it to respond differently for certain sizes. So let's go ahead and let's drop that there. And we're gonna go up to uh, CSS ID and classes. And we're gonna give this a class of sign up image there. I've already got it set. Now again, you don't have to use the dot in here. You're gonna use the dot in the actual style sheet. And one thing I wanted to mention as well is I'm gonna be putting my styles right here in my style sheet that's activated with this, the child theme of my, my demo site. But you can also put these here in the back section of Divi if you want to do your styles here. So you go to theme options, 
down to the very bottom here, and you can put all your your CSS in here as well if you're not using a child theme, but I highly recommend you do use a child theme. So we've got this tag in there. We've got this CSS image class. We're gonna go ahead and save that. Let me open up my style sheet, and I've got some settings already saved. So what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste these in here, and this is all gonna be available to you in this tutorial. So what I have here is I'm telling this sign up image, this class, that on desktop view, these are the parameters we want that set at. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's exit the visual builder. And there we go. Okay, we can see once we added those settings in the style sheet, it's saved and it looks like normal. Now again, once we get into this point, things get a little tricky. So I'm gonna do inspect element. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up at the top right and you're gonna see the pixels of this page. If you look at the top right there, once we get to about uh, that's all right there. Let's say like 1100, that's probably a good spot. At about 1100 pixels is when we want to minimize the, the negative margin here. So I've got some code saved again that we're gonna drop in that's gonna be available to you. So we're gonna keep this, I have this notice here that I'm on the desktop view, and we're gonna say once the screen hits 1100 pixels, the margin top, let's drop it to negative 45, which should help the, uh, which should help this image not drop over the text. So let's go ahead and clear the cache. And there we go. So here we go. We can see it looks good over here. Get a little closer, get a little closer. Ah, oh, the suspense, the suspense. Boom, drops it down a little bit and it looks much better. Now, we still need to worry about the tablet view. The tablet, that is way too big. It just looks massive and a little crazy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some code that again is using that class that I assigned for the tablet view. So we've got that here. We've got sign up images, tablet view. So we're gonna say that once the screen hits 980, the margin top is gonna be adjusted and it's gonna be a max width of 325. So let's go ahead and save this and I'll show you what I mean here. So we've got that. I'll wait till it notifies me that it's saved. And then we'll clear the cache. Okay, now let's do some inspect element. And once we get to 980, keep an eye on the pixels up at the top right. Once we get to 980, it drops and this iPad should not be near as big. There we go. So I can go ahead and look in here and this is where I can adjust the max width. Let's say I want it to be a little bit bigger. I can go in here and in the style sheet, you can see it's it has that class that I put in there. And here's my max width. Let's say I actually wanna make that like 355. There we go, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go into my style sheet. I'm gonna give that 355, save. And we're just gonna go ahead and keep the screen right here. Let's go ahead and refresh. And now we scroll down, boom, there we go. Now lastly, we need to adjust it for mobile. Again, it doesn't look too bad right here, but it's probably a little bigger than I would like for mobile. So let's go ahead and go, and I'm gonna put in the settings that I have saved. Very similar to what you'll see up top here. All, all of this is pretty much the same. We can actually drop the margin top and bottom, so it's gonna be the same, but we're just gonna give this a max width of 175. So as of right now, when we look at mobile, Let's go ahead and inspect element, and let's look at iPhone 6, which is usually where I start for mobile. We can see it's pretty big right now, so let's clear that cache since it just saved, and now let's look at mobile. Much, much better. That looks much, much better. So I can go in again to this element right here, and if I wanted to make it a little bit bigger, I could just play around here with inspect element, and I could go 205, that looks pretty good. I could just change it right here, then we're good to go. So that's it, guys. And the other thing you might wanna do is you might just wanna get in here and adjust the padding a little bit. So in this case, um, you know, now that we're kind of getting real uh, close on the bottom, I might go back into that row and just add a little padding right there. And that looks pretty good. Now let's do one final check on mobile. So we've got that. We're gonna clear the cache. More importantly, we need to exit the visual builder. And now when we look at mobile, the bottom shouldn't be so tight there on the bottom. And there we go, yeah, that'll work. So there you go, guys. It's very, very easy to just make some negative margins on an image. You can do this for any element that you have, whether it's products, eBooks, or whatever. And you have those mobile uh, responsive settings. Now, one thing I wanted to make sure you know is that this is available as a free layout kit. So you can download this on the page where you're seeing this tutorial, and you'll be able to import this in your site. You'll have all the settings and code, and you can replace this happy gentleman here. You can replace this. I'm also gonna give you the PSD file and some other tools and tips to where you can make this layout your own. So I hope this helped, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.